All right, chat. We are now about to go into the raid right now Then with, with, with the team, the squad, and Mylan. We're going to be learning about Lore. Rokus. Who was his daddy? Who was his mama? You know, what's his, what's his favorite hobbies? Things like that. That's what we're going to learn tonight. Who's ready to learn some lore? Me. Me. Infect me with your wisdom. So there are like sort of set pieces I have in mind that will stop and like tell lore about or talk about, but you know, Guardians, at any time ask a question and if you got them and the I'll do my best the to answer them. Like For sure. That's about it. Light, drown in the deep. Or rise from it. There's a little bit of lore on that sort of dialogue about drowning in the deep. It's quite specific to Rolk himself, but we're going to cover that when we talk about like Rolk's origin story. But Ooh. here's a moment where he is broken and then becomes unbroken, which leads to him becoming the disciple. Ah. The, the, yeah, the disciple. I'm assuming the witness had a, had a lot to do with that, huh? Uh-huh. You'll be correct. I don't think as much as we go in. Like, someone's asked me about what this thing is before. Like, what the... Right. Like, why it looks like this. Um, I've only got a couple of, like, theory crafting stuff from art station don't know if you, if you did you look at when bungie put out the um art station thing where it's got like all the concept art for witch queen and all the artists put up their like work and that oh no i don't think i've seen that oh, it's really cool because they um they put in like notes and it's not meant to be like official law but you can see where some of the design concepts come from so, like, Rolk's um, glaive has, like, oscillations and stuff on it. And it sort of reminds me of when they talk about the collapse and, like, gravity waves and that kind of thing. And I get very similar mm. vibes from, from this. But it's, like, nothing official. Right. And even from the encounter itself, how he can, like, push you out. Yeah. I think in the... In the Savathun's throne world, the lost the um, public event though that little triangle thing's meant to be some sort of weapon, right? Like it's the triangle on the mm -hmm. the ball on it. Oh, the one, the like one, the, the payload <laughs> public event. The payload, yeah, yeah. Now I think it's very clear. Rolf was a big fan of you know like Louisiana and yeah. going to the swamp, and that's why he styled it like this. Right. It's just a boat. Right. <laughs> I get it. How about them gator hunts? Actually, this, this is something you could talk about because this is like the swamp area of Sabathun's throne, right? <laughs> and um, before Witch Queen came out, we didn't know if this was her original throne world or if she re. Um, she like remolded it with the light and there's been law since that says yeah so it's her original throne world and she like remolded it with the light when she got the light so that all happens like in between her getting the light after the witch queen campaign or during the witch queen campaign ah so it's the swamp like that side of the house she never finished remodeling or was this intentional yeah, well, this, this was like the yeah like the, re the rejection of like what she was before Ah, and then everything else was like reborn in the light, so to speak. Sure, yeah. Uh, and she did some other stuff, which we'll talk about a bit later. Like, because Rolk has a whole Savathun, Savathun arc, essentially. And like, why why he's here. Why he's like got trapped in the throne world. Mm. Which is why the pyramid's also like in this derelict area. Yeah, trapped in a pyramid ship. I am very curious on like how how seven they pull that off. Yes, there's not a huge amount of detail, but we might we can we can talk a little bit about it now because it sort of sets up why, why it's here. Um, 
and Savathun was meant to become a disciple. Oh, and really? the witness was interested in Savathun being a disciple. And Rolk was actually placed here by the witness to mentor Savathun. And this is why when she has some of her memories, she talks about not wanting to be a servant of the witness because that's, you know, what was meant to happen. She was meant to be a servant of the witness and be a disciple like Rolk. Right. Rolk gets a little bit jealous of Savathun. Uh, I'm going to make a note to bring this back up later because we're not at the point of talking about it yet. But he gets jealous of Savathun. That become obvious because her her success is is m sort of related to him, which we'll talk about when we get to the right section. Um, so yeah, Rolk was meant to mentor her. Of course, Savathun being trickery and cunning and all sorts of clever realized that you know and this was she didn't want to be a servant of someone else she doesn't really answer to anyone else right so when she when she got the light she sealed rock in here in the pyramid ship and like broke the pyramid oh ship. so that so this wasn't something that happened like way before no this is like relatively recent which is, uh, okay. which is why I didn't, wasn't sure if this was like a new throne world, an old throne world that was remodeled. But yeah, it's it's an old, it's an original throne world remodeled in the light um, when she was revived and she used the light to seal Rolk in here. Savathun was, uh, she was pretty busy in the week between escaping the Dreaming City and the <laughs> Witch Queen. <laughs> Yeah, right. How, do we know how much time actually passed during that section? I don't know if we do. It almost seemed like immediate though, right? Like she, she, she TP. Well, yeah. In, in real life, everyone, it seems like it happens immediately, but like, bro, she like gives all these hive the light. She seals Rolk. Oh She's, yeah, that's true. Like, yeah. There, there could have like been a big gap shit. there. <laughs> mm. I almost kind of wish Seeds of the Lost ended, you know, like they they did the very last week, but then it's like, oh, wait again. I wish they'd just done that like a month before. You know, that way it would have felt more natural then. That like, oh yeah, she did do these things. In, yeah, like a that's month true. Rather than a, rather than a week. Yeah, that's I think true. she would have gone around. She is Sabathun though, so I mean, not still not that surprising though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she had a lot of things planned, like re yeah. in you know ready mm -hmm. to execute essentially. So, does she have intentions of killing Rook? Rook? Um, I don't know why she. I know. I think she, she just like you guess. Guess she can just stay trapped in my, <laughs> in my throne world. <laughs> I mean, we end up killing Rook, so it would be sort of the ultimate like uh, <laughs> classic Sabathun. Right. You know, get your enemies to do the dirty work. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, put it this way, right? So she was the one keeping Rolk contained, like trapped here. So when we took out Savathun, we had no choice to come in here and take out Rolk. Oh. So then she then she can just come back. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> thanks for <laughs> taking out Rolk. <laughs> do you think she and was holding the... Rolk as like collateral, or do you think she would eventually would have would have wanted to kill him? Uh, I'm not too sure. I, I can't remember if there's something why she just trapped rather than killed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was just like a a flex. Maybe yeah, yeah. Because you thought he was so strong and just gets imprisoned, gets out tricked, gets, you know. <laughs> Maybe she couldn't kill him anymore because. Maybe Savage she... wanted a boyfriend. Oh, jeez. You because, know, uh, I know, I know why Korra mentions in the little cutscene after the raid was beaten on day one that Beyond. it took people mm -hmm. using light and dark to beat him. Maybe Savathun mm -hmm. couldn't kill him? Or they had a thing going on. Yeah. Never know. I mean, well, this is possible. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I have to look in that one. There's a little, like a tiny bit of lore as you're going through this, these sort of areas and you can see the, um, like the worms and stuff right okay. uh like frozen or oh yeah yeah these whatever guys they are yeah uh this hints at rolk's experimentation with the worms to put worms into 
other beings that aren't Hive. Oh. And we actually f see one of them in the raid. Any guesses? Uh, they spoiled it, so caretaker. Caretaker. <laughs> yeah. Caretaker yeah, would, is uh, a mix of scorn and uh, worm. Hive worm. Nice. And it's a successful experiment. To, well, actually, you get the report from the, you know, the 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 conspiracy board, and um, it they, that's their suspicion. So, like, one of the hive agents is like, the hidden agents is like, you know, we 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 believe that caretaker is the successful experimentation of mixing scorn and worm. Right. Right. So. That's why it looks like a bit of both. When are we getting our worm or a worm? <laughs> I mean, we got one. He's in the gun. <laughs> you know, you know, what I mean. you know, you know. <laughs> Deception queen. Pain. <laughs> yes. That'll be, uh, that'll be the life. That's how oh. we'll get the next set of subclasses. You have to. All right. Here's our next, de here's our next destination. Yes, have a look at worm mummy. <laughs> This is where mummy. That's the cross. Worm. Come back, come back, come back. Oh, oh, oh. Here, worm. You missed, you missed, the, you missed the lookout point. <laughs> so, do you know much about Zeta? So, um, I just remember old, old dude in Parasite called him Mama Worm. Yeah. So, this was a new introduced, like, essentially worm god that we never knew about. Um, so, we, kn we knew there was a, a Z. Aka and Zol and Ur and Ear. Um, I think I'm missing one. But they introduce uh, Zeta, which is like mother worm, mummy worm, the nurturing worm. And she plays an important role for how she got here, uh, which we'll talk a bit more when we get to the, to the big bone room. And she, there's sort of multiple theories on what's going on here, like why the worm mouth is sort of facing up to that cube thing which is called the upended and there's a bit of lore on the upended it is something that seems to reverse powers um there when rolk destroyed his home planet he talks about upending it and the way that he upended it was he reversed one of the the power of the sun back onto itself and oh. because he talks about it being upended this might have origins from that time um he may have created the upended from his home planet or at least had the idea of like reversing powers to destroy something so that's sort of like one theory the other thing is like i said before rolk was captured here and this was his plan to escape if sabathun was to betray him so the upended was meant to be like you know having a very powerful weapon in your back pocket and mm. it was intended to actually destroy Sabathun's throne world he planned to use it to destroy the throne world if um Sabathun betrayed him obviously Sabathun still beat him to it and so it's it's still still here in Sabathun's world still here as well right so continue continue no 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 you ask the question as you go well I was going to ask um was he not able to destroy it because she got the lights and she rebuilt her throne world? Yeah, I imagine how it played out is that she she trapped him and in, in here before he was able to activate it. And it's mm. it's interesting because this gets more powerful as we go through the raid, right? Like right now it's a very soft glow. And as you go through the raid, it gets like more and more powered up. And that's like one of the things that's not really explained and we can only sort of theory craft to why it's getting more juiced as we go through the raid. Right. And we do know in the lore that the upended is taking energy from Zeta. It is being powered by Zeta, the mummy worm. So it's at first, I thought it was shooting down into her mouth, but it's actually going up from Zeta into the upended. Oh. And it says that Zeta powers the upended. Um, so we sort of know how worm gods function but well, we know how the larvae function and they they feed on death right and decay and you could speculate that as we go through and kill stuff we are 
unknowingly feeding Zeta, and then she's powering the upended, and that's why it powers up during the raid. Wow. So she's uh, yeah. alive. Yeah, you can see her move and stuff now. Like, if you watch carefully, when we get to, the, I think, the next room, oh, you can even see she's it like now. Swaying, right now. Yeah, swaying right there. Okay. I just, she's like swaying and moving and things. Fire. Okay. Yeah. So she's sort of um, alive, so to speak, but I would say in stasis or like being. If you would take a worm and use it as like a power source, like technically she's alive, but obviously she's sort of being drained and uh, used in this area. Right. So with, uh, it being the, with it being the upended and being able to, you know, like reverse things, yeah. didn't it, isn't part of its function also to like sustain her to be able to make worms? So that is coming up in a bit. Uh, with the worm larvae. With the upended specifically, that's not how they made it, but Zeta is involved. And I reckon we'll, we'll we'll cover the worms when we get to the next next room. But yeah. Sorry, not that I know of. The upended wasn't specifically <laughs> involved with make it could have been, but we actually do the worm factory quest uh as the exotic, right? Like that's the exotic quest post raid. And you you see the worm factory you go into the dark city in the worm factory and that's where yep. the disciple made the worm larvae and there's a bit of extra lore about how zeta's involved with that process but not to do with the upended from what i know okay gotcha. yeah. uh anything else like on the upended here subjugation so the other thing is they yeah like i said they sort of use it like a, a weapon um to subjugate you know people or beings, you know, it was meant to be this powerful weapon, like, hey, you know, bend the knee, basically, or oh, wow. <laughs> we'll tip you out upside down, take your lunch money. <laughs> yeah, some dark force stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's a bit of lore on potentially where it came from, which I think we'll cover when we do Rolk's Law at the Mosaic, but uh, this idea of, like, reversing powers probably came from how he destroyed his own son. The overall plan, like I said, yeah, was to potentially destroy Savathun's throne world if he needed to because he was meant to be mentoring Savathun. Uh, and there is, you'll notice as we go through the raid, there, the upended gets a lot of dialogue. And um, listen out for it. There is one, there is one scene where uh, Rolk says the upended, a triumvirate, opportunity, preservation, salvation, it will serve the deserving and crush the defiant. And um, a triumvirate is like a, a group of three men that hold power, which is like a Roman thing, I believe. Hmm. And so it's, and then it, then it lists three things, opportunity, preservation, salvation. But this sort of caused a bit of speculation like, okay, well the witness to salvation, does that mean there's like two other witnesses or, or does oh. it mean there's, there's like three upended, or does it mean there's three disciples like this idea of there being essentially three things that hold power and that is opportunity preservation salvation we know that the witness op often represents salvation and maybe it's something like the witness is salvation maybe the traveler's opportunity and then something else is you know preservation don't know but you you'll hear it by rock when we when we progress a little bit more through as well and the final thing it's meant to seal our world from the light you will also hear uh rock say that the upended was intended to seal our world from the light whatever that means i think i interpret that very similarly to uh like reversing of powers so if our if our world is, you know, blessed by the traveler and light blessed, the reversal of that would be sealing it in darkness. So mm. maybe that that's also its use. Um, and it's also meant to be part of the final abyss. You hear Rolk talk about it again as we go through that. Uh, it will be part of the witnesses um, plan for the final abyss. And what, what that means is that the final shape is at the, the end of uh, light and dark, is at the nothing that Callus sees when he encounters the witness, you know, the end of the universe, right. so to speak. 
Um, but this may have been part of that plan. There you go. That's upended. Oh. Nope. Mm. Oh. So, now that we beat Rolk, right? What's that? We get, now that we beat Rolk, do we get to set her free back to her babies? Well, <laughs> she's kind of dead. Yeah. You, you <laughs> see, when, you, when you come in here after you beat Rolk, Mummy Worm's dead. And oh. if... I don't know why. I don't know if that's like it just backfires. I don't know. That's why I asked actually about the upended. I I thought that it was like the the disciple and the witness. I thought they were like feeding her energy, you know, her sustenance so she could stay alive and they could make larvae from her. And with Rolt gone and the upended turned off, she doesn't get yeah. any energy anymore, so she died. Exact. See that I thought the exact same thing just visually, and then when I finished reading the law book, it sort of says it the other way around. It sort of says that uh, Zeta powers the upended. So that made me think, oh, maybe it's going the other way, and maybe that's how it it becomes more powerful. But I th I think visually that description actually makes more uh, sense. That's why I was thinking maybe it's a you know when he's not using the upended to destroy shit. Maybe it's charging her, but then, you know, a battery can go both ways. So maybe it's like, yeah. oh, I need to use this. So uh, Z, yeah. give me your energy. Yeah. Arm power. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But That's like what I was thinking. Like, like a battery. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, you better not start doing law videos. I'll come after you. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm a nerd. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very nice. So that's our first destination. That's on the <laughs> Let's go. Is it this room, by yeah, the way? So you, can, you, you can see the scorn and stuff mm. um, in here, getting the worm experiments. Start it. Start it. Okay. They look like they're having fun. Yeah, it looks like they're taking a worm to the face. Right. <laughs> yeah. This one over here is kind of fucked. Yeah. It looks like his head's just getting bitten off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's like, it's pretty gruesome. I don't know if it's meant to be like going down their throats, which would be pretty horrific. We, we've never gotten any lore about how the hive actually ingested the worms, did we? Or it just said they did. They just, yeah, it was uh, like, they <laughs> did, I believe. Oh God, maybe it is yeah, that gruesome. Right it was just introduced. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Limitless potential. Domination unbound. Uh, so this big bone has a chunk of lore, but we just spent a whole bunch of time talking, so maybe we can complete the encounter and then we can talk about it if you want. Sure. Question with this dialogue there. Um, the beginning he said, the witness sees, like, so, he's like he says something about, like, sees your future. Like the light completely fall? free, like like completely it's free. Does that mean like fall. we won't have the light? Is that what he means by free? In quotations. Yeah. Well, in the last cutscene with the witness, right? He says, "No more life, no more death," which is sort of like putting an end to the game, the end of like both sides almost. <laughs> that it's not just like absence of light, but it's also like an absence of darkness. And that's sort of similar to what Callus sees when um, Callus meets the... Well, now we know they're all the same thing. He meets the darkness, he meets the entity, he meets uh, the witness when he's on the Leviathan, and he has a vision of nothingness. That being said, I feel like Rolk is very much... <laughs> Team darkness, uh, not <laughs> like uh, yeah. you know, no, just get rid of everything. It's it's a bit of light, and mostly get rid of light. But um, maybe it's that's Sabbath. what the final abyss is. The final shape might be might be everything going. I'm not too sure. Mm -hmm. Sabathun also mentions that in one of her like two truths, two lies. Also, right, that like the witness just wants nothing for like the final shape. Yeah, yeah. So maybe, um, there's there's a fair few like them. yeah and there's a fair few stuff that refers to like this you know nothing and they also use like a capital N too like it's a proper mm -hmm. noun um, in Callus's entry anyway. First the bone ten points for Gryffindor. What is the bone from? Well, the Leviathan. Leviathan. 
Oh, everyone got it. Very nice. Yes. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Um, so the story is, so Mummy Zeta and the other worm gods were trapped on the fundament, likely imprisoned there by the Leviathan, which I guess was an agent of the light. Rolk, for whatever reason, discovered them, went down there to see if they could be servants to the witness to recruit them as he encountered the leviathan in the deep the leviathan tried to stop him and he straight up mortal combated the leviathan ripped <laughs> out the rib bone nice. <laughs> it's like these worms do not belong to you they belong to the witness and probably one of the most badass things that he did because rolk's like the size he is right right he's like swinging around this bone right like some dragon ball z character good lord and uh the leviathan's like yeah okay you're pretty powerful and wouldn't make <laughs> eye contact and <laughs> rolk like puts the bone underneath the leviathan's chin is essentially like look at me when i'm talking to you and like, like a raises... school teacher with a ruler <laughs> yeah school teacher with a ruler but just imagine a creature that's big as a continent and essentially a dude you know twice our height holding this thing Good um grief. and yeah he's like yeah these do not belong to you or the light they belong to the witness goes down into um where zeta is and the worms and for whatever reason, Rolk already sort of understood that by themselves, the worm gods weren't powerful, but they could be really powerful, but they needed, they were going to need a host. So he says to Zeta, look, you got a choice. You come with me and I'll save your children, the worm gods. And not really much of a choice because Mama Zeta does what mamas do. And he's like, okay, I guess what I need to do is save my, my kids is to essentially go into servitude for the witness. So Rolk brings Mummy Zeta back. And this is when we get the sort of creation story of the worm larvae. So it just says, um, and it's unclear. It says that, that sort of pieces of Zeta are cut off and Rolk brings back the worm larvae. So whatever your interpretation of that is, Rolk is called worm father by the um uh the Sabathun's, Sabathun's worm. worm yeah Sabathun's <laughs> worm in your gun so you you can get dialogue when the raid had finished if you were if you were if you had that gun out and you're just chilling in like patrols in the throne world you actually can get dialogue from um Sabathun's worm <laughs> that's like worm father you killed worm father or something along those lines <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when father is Rolk, when mother is Zeta. I mean, not your typical sort of relationship. Right, uh, I'm, I'm but, trying to visualize that. Um, yeah, but the worm larvae, the, 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 the point is the worm larvae came from that. And that is what... And then Rolk took that larvae and he put it on the fundament. And that was the plan, obviously, to save, to save Zeta's children was one of those species on the fundament was going to pick up the worm larvae they're eventually going to be led to the worm gods they're going to strike the bargain they're going to take the larvae into their species they would then go on an absolute death and destruction and that would feed the worm gods it would feed them and they would all get powerful enough to leave the planet and of course savathun was the one to to find the worm well her father found the the white worm which is what you see in the witch queen campaign and when he died, it got passed on to Savathun, and that's what Savathun found. And we also know that they helped this plan along by making up the cataclysm, the, the tidal wave that was going to come as well, which was the other big sort of plot twist of the Witch Queen campaign. Right. Which sort of encourages them to find the worm gods and, <laughs> and uh, go with them. So Rook is yeah. the worm daddy. Wow. Worm daddy. Worm Daddy Rolk. 
a good title. And we've already talked about the upended. We've talked about Zeta. Oh, we already almost missed the mosaic. This is what you were up to in the video that you definitely oh, didn't yeah, watch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what room is that in? Is that down over here? So, this is really cool because once you read all of Rolk's origin story, this essentially sums up the origin story of Rolk in like a single mosaic. So, the original planet was called Lubre that Rolk lived on and that's represented by the big like circle like the green and the blue sort of outline right it had two suns one was called the blue sun which is on the left and it was also referred to as a sapphiric sun like sapphire and the other sun was called the umbral sun and that's on the right now they sort of represent light and dark but not quite and that's why you can see on the left the blue sun has these like light rays coming out of it oh yeah and on the right you've got the darkness sort of from it and i, I say sort of because the blue sun's meant to be like their salvation their protection um and the umbral sun when the umbral sun came out it was like darkness there were there were a lot of dangers on the planet and it was, you know, it wasn't necessarily safe to, to be outside, so to speak. Yeah. Um, the Traveller, which is actually the being at the top, the colour at the top is the Traveller visiting Lubre and essentially gave them their own golden age. And what this did is like when any sort of civilization or groups of people get power you get greed and you get corruption and there was some people that sort of hogged it all we don't know the exact details of how that happened but they sort of describe how when they had a golden age it separated the people and some of them ended up being what was called the regime and they built this city under that was had a lot of sort of tech and it was considered very safe and it was sort of be in this area with the with the blue sun mm. the people that rose up against the regime i think it was just because of general inequality they ended up being the wanderers and they lived outside the city and so every time the umbral sun came up you know they had to sort of flee and hide in caves and sort of try to survive the dangers of the planet and rolk was in that category he was in the umbral sun wanderers um and between the city like it sort of sounds like it's around the city there is what's called the abyss and this is probably the line that goes straight down the middle is the abyss so the regime they would have like hunting parties to go and find the wanderers essentially and track them down and kill them because you know they consider them traitors to the city and eventually they found Rolk and his clan and his family. And Rolk defended himself. He picked up uh, the glaive, which was meant to be a weapon of the regime. And he successfully killed a bunch of these this, this hunting party. Mm. What happened then was his family and the clan members were a little bit scared of Rolk. And I imagine it would be something like you know if you went to war and your teammate enjoyed the killing too much <laughs> like even though you, you're there to do a job right but like you're like he you just had too much bit, fun yeah you're a bit too good at it and it, it, it's the way that it's very cryptic how they describe it but they were essentially scared of him they're like yeah like you defended us but <laughs> We're a bit we're a bit scared of you now because you're pretty good at it. Um, and they also introduce, you know, typical psychopathic tendencies. Like he kills pets of the children without like any empathy and like remorse. And like it's pretty Damn. bad, like pills peels the skin off it and stuff like that. This like animal. What? And like all the kids are crying and he's like, whatever, essentially. So it builds up to them sort of rejecting him, even though he protected them. And it also introduces his idea. He looks up to his father and he believes that his father has these same tendencies, but 
ended up suppressing them and becoming quite weak because of it. His mm. father was captured during, even though like Rolk sort of successfully defended, his father was captured and taken to the regime. And so Rolk, feeling like a bit of an outcast, leaves his clan and is like, you know what, I'm going to go bring father back. Goes to try to find father. When he finds father, he his father's wearing the, the clothes of the regime. And he's like, you've now betrayed me. Like, now I've got to kill you. And it sort of gets really upset because in his mind, his father was the only person that probably understood him or understood, like, the tendencies that he did have. And now he feels quite betrayed by that because his father's gone to the regime. It's sort of hinted at that the father was doing a double cross and really was still on the side of Rolk and that and the Wanderers and was just sort of trying to infiltrate the regime. But I can't remember exactly, but Rolk then, it gets very complicated. Rolk then switches sides himself because the regime end up, because he goes to trial because he gets caught, Rolk gets caught, and they sort of embrace his killing nature. And he's like, well, the, the, the regime are like embracing me and like my, my family has rejected me. And he still thinks that his father's betrayed him, even though now he's switched to the regime side. Father bounces back to the Wanderer's side. Then Rogue's like, okay, I've had enough. I'm going to kill, kill dad. Like that's working for the regime now. He, trying to accomplish this, falls down what's just called the abyss which no one had ever really been down before they just thought it was this giant crack on the planet they didn't know really if it ever ended and he talks about how he became broken he fell into this pit his glaive broke he became broken and um there he essentially encounters the witness how the witness knew he was there if the witness was already there we're not too sure. I just get the impression the witness is trying to find disciples. And the witness talks about finding him broken and that he's going to make him unbroken. And he fixes his glaive. It very much sounds like he uses darkness. Very sound, sounds like he infuses Rolk with darkness. And then Rolk climbs out of the abyss, which is this sort of line down the middle. And um, basically claws his way out of the abyss using the glaive. And from there, he decapitates his father, nice. he kills his mother, he nice. kills everyone, and basically wipes out the planet. Um, which oh, I'll talk yeah. about in a sec. So that's why this triangle is at the bottom of this line, right? That's the abyss. Right. And the triangle represents, you know, the witness visiting Rock when he falls down the pit and coming back out as uh, the disciple. When he comes back out, this is when that lore about the up ended. He gets some technology called the Sapphiric Converter. And it's not too like um, specific on what this thing does. It just says it takes the energy of the blue sun and uses it in some way. And Rolk just says he reverses that energy and cracks the blue sun. And the blue sun, after it's been cracked, it upends Lubre and Lubre is no more. The whole place just destroys the planet essentially and the reason why this is a bit hard to tell but there's there's the there's a glaive in the background of the blue sun right which can mean a couple of things at first i thought it's meant to represent lubre's ruin which is the glaive of rolk which is what he uses to claw himself out of the abyss when he's basically become the disciple in some concept art, they actually confirm that this is his father's glaive. Um, and you can actually see it when we get to the final encounter. It's in the it's in the back of the like DPS platform. And it is it's there. So Wow. Mm, you know, I don't know if that's just meant to say that was the, 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 the breaking point for Rolk is, you know, his father's betrayal was, is what really broke him. And that's why it's passing through the blue sun and sort of set him on this path to destroy worlds, essentially. Boom. Wow. That is the mosaic. <laughs> Dude, the abyss sounds pretty awesome, though, right? <laughs> Jump down, come back out, darkness powers. Yes.
So when you There's say e I'm broken, did Rogue play PvP? <laughs> oh no. Uh, mate, with his, uh, he's got the attitude of a PvP. And that's <laughs> right? like, I mean, it makes you question, like, was he in there as well? Like... <laughs> I got a question for you, Mylan, on uh, your yep. interpretation. So, uh, in the Shattered Suns lore book, it constantly refers to, you know, this is the Umbral Sun. Yeah. And yeah. originally it was thinking, uh, like, is that referring to, like, potentially a black hole or, like, a black dwarf star? Considering the mural's red, do you, is it supposed to imply that it was just, like, some kind of, like, red dwarf star? Do you have any idea of exactly the I, nature I don't of know. what the Umbral Sun is supposed to be? I typically stick away from like trying to relate it to our reality too much. Otherwise, I get a lot of that. Um, actually, <laughs> if you look into the into the Nova Warp physics, I'm like, okay, I, 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 I don't know enough about it. Um, I think you probably could find some relation there. It the blue sun, and the umbral sun is, is is odd because at first I'm like, okay, it's just meant to represent the light and the darkness. Um. But it's 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 very cryptic, and that's one of the cool things about the book. It, it reminds me a lot of the books of Sorrow, where it takes a fair bit of interpretation to work out what's happening. So, I think on a story point of view, it's meant to represent um, light and dark, and it links into the idea of the upended because they specifically say the blue sun's meant to be their salvation, and Rolk upends the planet and it becomes their destruction. You know, the blue sun was meant to give them life and power and. You know, obviously those those themes are very similar to how the Traveler and the Pyramid Ship function. So that's sort of how I interpret it. But um, it was, it I'm sure smarter people than me can also provide some input to the Umbral Sun. Okay. I uh, wasn't sure if there was like some... I haven't been able to tab through all of the concept art. I didn't know if there was something stashed away about that in particular or not. Yeah. Bungie does like to do that kind of stuff, though. Like, does like to relate it back to our world in some way. And if they can base it in reality, they, they usually do. But I don't have the knowledge for that one. Do you? I also have... don't know what these little things on the right... So on the, on the left, right, I mean, this is... I, th I assume this is Rolk's head. I think so, yeah, because it's got, like, the six like, eyes. Yeah, mm. that's like the birth of Rolk, right? You know, and destroying the blue sun. What? Do you think... You think these are this the three is? potential darkness subclasses we'll eventually get? Because that could be stasis. And this is the same color of stuff that Rolk uses. And if we ever get the, you know, if we ever get a poison class. Poison class, the green. Or taken. We get a worm inside of us. Oh. I think that's so that, you say it's like, it's, it's sort of like coming off the umbral side. Yeah, like off the darkness. Yeah, off that side. That's Just, Rolk. Because that was the other thing I was going to ask you about, too, in your interpretation. When he's in the Abyss, it mentions the Witness giving him um, his, like, reforming his glaive, and it gives him yeah. his luster with a capital L. Yeah. I, I was almost wondering, like, is that meant to be, like, the powers he, we you know, the orangish power that we see him wield in the raid, which would kind of correlate with, like, this? Yeah, see... I didn't focus too much on the luster. Uh, I, I just didn't know if that was just another mm -hmm. word for, for darkness. Is, is that what they're meant to be implying there? Or if it was something unique or, or different? Um, I, I honestly don't know. Because, yeah, that, that's what it says. It says luster. Yeah. I was just, I was taken aback by it being like a capital letter. I was like, hmm. Didn't know if it yeah. meant more than just raw darkness. Yeah. And they also like describe Rolk as like wrath. And he ends up becoming like mm -hmm. this symbol for wrath. Um, and I don't know the implications of that either. It also talks about how Oryx and Zivu fell to wrath, but Savathun didn't. So that's maybe how she escaped sort of becoming a servant, so to speak. She didn't fall to wrath. To wrath. Maybe it's like a metaphor for like she didn't go far enough, kind of like Star Warsy. She didn't go far enough down the dark path for it to fully consume her. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. That's a good way to think about it. Hmm. Yeah, Matt. What are you doing the rest of the way? You want to write a script for me? <laughs> Come here. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much cool stuff that they added post post raid like all these stories were basically all scannables and then they linked everything oh here it is Triumphant. 
Opportunity, preservation, salvation. See? Why is it me? Serve the deserving. Crush the defiant. Now tell me, is Star Horse of the Darkness? Can you explain this? I have no <laughs> idea. I literally have no idea about this wars. <laughs> like none. Zero. <laughs> Fucked up horse to the head. Holy shit. Like, do you reckon it's Star Horse reference? You reckon it's multiverse? I mean, <laughs> I reckon mean, it's Saturn breaking out of the game? I don't know. I mean, Bungie basically confirmed the Paraverse is kind of a thing. Yep. <laughs> like, because yep. because uh, Mita Multi Tool comes from the Marathon universe, That's and now we right. have Halo guns. Well, yeah, mm. the the para the Paraverse was confirmed with um with Dares of Eternity, you know, like Xur and mm -hmm. Star Wars are like quoting like game shows from our reality. And then the <laughs> Collector's Edition book, I think, um, went went the next step and sort of implied that Savathun is trying to break out the game and we might be the parent universe. Ooh. So, don't know. That was a, that was a mind. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I was... Like, that's what Truth to Power was about. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. So is this all like worm experiment experiments? Yeah, I assume it's just all the worm worm rock experimentation stuff going on here with worms and, and different species. Nice. I love the vibe of here. It's like so, like Night of the Museum <laughs> kind of deal. <laughs> or I always think of like the Natural History Museum, you know, like, like a big dinosaur at the front entrance, but it's just a big worm instead. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, uh, I'm to it, um, did the worms make races, uh, I'll say more civilized, considering, uh, the caretaker, we've never seen an abomination, uh, seemingly sentient, not just like a, oh, I'm monster. <laughs> hmm. So make the care he, caretaker he more seemed, civilized. He, he does seem like a good boy, yeah. Yeah. Not I gods. <laughs> Disciples. Prophets, saviors serving existence, an undying purpose, a privilege. Yeah, so you've, I've already sort of spoken a little bit about um, Caretaker, the, the main thing being that he's a successful experimentation of Worm and Scorn. And if you watch the, um, if you look at the, the artwork I told you about, um, this little backpack, I think, has part of the worm in it. Ah. Um, and, and it oh. goes, like, into, like, sort of goes into his body. Did, did any of the art station stuff give an idea of, like, what this thing is, or no? The, the spinny thing? No, yeah, just, like, they just mentioned, like, oscillations and waves and amplitudes, and I, I'm, I really don't know what the deal is with the spinny thing it, it does remind me of like the gravity waves or something when the collapse happened and maybe this is like a How visualization no i'm not too sure uh all right i've got the art station here there you go chat you can have a look Wemmy boy it's either like a symbiote in his in his little coffin on his back and it like feeds into his body that's disgusting. <laughs> Not for pleasure, nor glory, but in service of an ailing, endless void. So the worm in his back Where became a tree? does your purpose lie? It seems like. So, I, this has been like bugging me to try to work out like what this is and why it becomes like, it looks like a tree. But then after looking through some of the art station, I was thinking it's more about, um, like darkness veins mm -hmm. and that that could be one in like term, like this darkness sort of reaching out when you get to rolk he's like a nerve center so to speak like the art station again has which you can't really take as canon but they have like him as a nerve center and he's connected to the upended and all that kind of thing and he's got these like little veins going out into the system so i don't know if this is meant to represent everything being sort of connected or like darkness veins i'm trying to reach out grab another symbiote um mm. but 
it's obviously very intentional and I haven't read a whole bunch about it and I'm interested if people have theories on it too. Do you think it's like a mockery of, you know, the traveler or to say the gardener of like, you know, it's like a perverted like, you know, garden of death, like broke in him like this. That's just what came yeah. to my mind is almost, you know, like a mockery. I mean, it could be like the Triv Silver Wings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like how that could be corrupted. Yeah. I definitely, like, although I thought Tree the first time, it also looks a lot like neurons, like brain stuff, you know, like the synapses between as they come out and connect right. things, which is, which is why I sort of focus a bit more on that in the art station because they sort of have that design in there too. Uh, oh, it is in the Sparrow Law. You're right. Oh, thank you. Who said that? Yes, yes, yes. I am a dum dum. This is in the Sparrow Law. Uh, the Raid Sparrow has law like this. And I do think it is darkness reaching out for him. And the dude blows up the Sparrow. Mar is it Marcus? Chat? Marcus blows up the Sparrow to stop it from getting him. I can bring it up if you want, and we can solve this together. Have a listen. Okay, this is called Gouging Light. And the flavor text reads, All told, I can't believe Holiday was able to put it back together. Not a lot left after a small scale nuclear blast. In the moment this, in the moment his sparrow crashed, there was, hold on one second. Yeah. There was no time to react, to brace, to think. There was, however, an instant for him to feel an unbearable brief eternity when everything in Marco's world was pain, nothing else existed, just the simple sharp agony that made up his whole universe. And just as quickly as it was gone, stillness. The sound of a motorized whine returned to him first, ringing in opposition to the pulsing ache in his head. Slowly his eyes adjusted and he glimpsed the unbearable brightness of the Martian sun. Slowly and all too quickly, pain returned to smother all else. The sparrow beside him smoked, reactor shielding intact, but only just. He eyed the long gouge in the ground where the bike had bottomed out and scraped its way across the ruddy landscape where it had rolled over his. He looked down at what was still attached of the leg, broken twisted meat bile caught in his throat and he choked it before um, and he choked it down before realizing he, the mangled limb was the only corner of his flesh free from pain the sun royals white beyond white plumes lick worlds hope births agony births stillness now this is like a a little quote that's added I don't know if this is the witness talking. It doesn't follow the same naming conventions or the same writing conventions in the other law entries when the witness is having a conversation, but it seems to be a bit like that. I wonder if chat has a theory on that. We'll keep going. Uh, strained electro mariachi music still sputtered through the sparrow speakers. Marco struggled to inhale and a flutter in his chest hinted at a punctured lung punctured his ragged breath caught and he looked for the sample containers packed so carefully carefully and cautiously by the guardians who'd survived the raid on the throne world pyramid so he's carrying containers packed by guardians who survived the raid on the throne world pyramid right his gaze fell on container 6010 lying cracked against a spar of basalt we have this weird quote again yawning plasma thick embrace light gouging light only warm shadows black veins snaked through the red dust through the wreckage and then that quote again hand delivered glory strips pain from those too weak to savor they wound through the soil and where flesh met dirt had already traced into his twisted limb the sparrow's carriage throbbed like a heart, and Marco could feel the hymal rhythm in his leg. Uh, worlds burned free, sweet, still ash. Another one of those quotes. Visions crowded his mind, spilling into his mouth and lungs, threatened to drown him in bliss. 
His shattered leg turned and popped and righted itself, and euphoria filtered through him where pain should be. Deep, still, safe embrace. He dragged his sidearm from his holster, gasping as he took careful aim at the cracked reactor shielding. So soft and still. His mind tore free, and in an unbearable, brief eternity, he gulped one final breath. Lie still. What remained of Marco squeezed the trigger. Cool. So, he has things from the raid. He crashes his, his sparrow, which has a reactor on it. These darkness black veins snake his way through to him, heals him, and almost seems to take him over. And then it says, what remained? Squeeze the trigger. So then he shoots the reactor and blows up, causes Holy a mini shit. nuclear explosion. This is some flood level stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. I think that's that's what these little veins are. These are like darkness. I, this, this, corruption this reminds tendrils. me of how. Yeah, this reminds me how Rolk Rolk went from broken at the bottom of the abyss to unbroken. He got he he was healed. He was fixed and becomes the like a a disciple. With, with how like you know like vein or like almost like tree limb, it looks you know esque. I wonder if it's tied to the nightmares on the moon at all, because they kind of have the same, like, you know, veins coming out from them whenever yeah. they, like, spawn in. Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing. I wonder if they're related. Yeah. It's all dark power. Yep, so if you look at Mummy Worm now, as you go through, she'll uh, have increased charge. So the guy who, who killed himself with the reactor, what was his name again? I keep want to say Mark, no, Marco. 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 Paolo. Mar Marco. <laughs> Forever remember you. Oh, you guys went past the, the board. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. The thing, this thing. You probably know that. You probably know that, don't you? Oh, this thing? This, yeah, you know this thing? Oh, no. No, what's... You don't? No, no. <laughs> Dude, it's fucked, Cross. <laughs> Wait, you did not. You don't, you're not shitting me, are you? No, no, no. I really don't. I, I don't know. I don't know anything. Is this related oh. to the uh, exotic ghost? Uh, don't know, but you're, you're going to lose your mind. You're going to absolutely flip your lid. Hold on a second. Let me, I got to bring up the actual message. One sec. So, did you find it strange how Bungie gave us official call outs for the symbols, right? Or when you're in the first room, if you're ADS, you see the actual official names, right? Right. When we come in this room, we've actually got unlucky here. When you come in here, you have a chance of one of, of, of a symbol appearing on this wall. One, one to two symbols. And what it is asking you to do is crowdsource to fill in all these symbols. And when you fill them in, it tells a story if you use the official name. Okay? So starting from left to right, up to down, if you read from the top left, this symbol was Hive. Then it goes Scorn, Love, and it goes so on. And we've basically filled everything out except for the last symbol. So if you read it, it says this. Hive, Scorn, Love, Darkness. Worship, Witness. Pyramid, Fleet, Enter, Earth. Stop, Guardian. Witness, Commune, Traveler, Drink, Light. Witness, Kill. And we don't know the last one. Oh, yeah, right. Yo, I don't like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the other thing is, it's like, uh, what's the game? Is it Price is Right? What's the game show? So, if you, if you get, uh, what's repeated? If you get Witness, right, it will show Witness here and Witness here because that's where it is in the story. So, I guess the implication is. This can only be either a symbol we have never seen or it'd be one of the symbols that is not mentioned. So the symbols that are not mentioned, uh, I need to bring up a picture of all the symbols that are not mentioned. Okay, here we go. Worm is not there. Tower is not S there. Savathun's not on there either. Savathun's not on there. Is Earth on there? Earth is already on there. Yeah, uh, what's a what's a brain symbol? Remember, kill remember. 
black gardens are on there, but doesn't quite make sense. <laughs> Worship is on there. Drink. Drinks is on there. Pyramid. Yep. Give. Give doesn't quite fit, mm. but it's not on there. Kill give. Kill giving. It's the war on Christmas. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, fleet's on there. Enter. Enter's not on there. Tower's not on there. Traveler on there. Traveler's already on there. Yeah, Traveler's on there. What's it? Scorn? Scorn's on there. Mm -hmm. Is the Scorn on high? there? Love, love the dark. Tops on there. Black heart. I don't think that's on there, is it? Oh, wouldn't that? Dude, if we do a full circle back to Destiny 1, <laughs> <laughs> they bring the black heart in somehow. We're like, oh my god. Uh, light, darkness. Darkness is on there. Light's on there. Sabathun, you said it's not on there. Love. Love's on there. Grieve. Grieve is not on there. Ascendant. Realm? Throne world? I think that's on there either. Not on there. There you go. Witness gonna kill Savathun? That gonna, seems likely. <laughs> gonna kill somebody. Gonna kill something. Yeah. yeah. That's dope. Pretty though. cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's I remember seeing that shit board. talking. And we were just like, yeah, I hope there's not a puzzle. We just ran past it. Like, I hope we don't have to solve whatever this thing is. Overall, everything in this rate is just right. What do you mean? Like a, like a trip? The storytelling like, is just like. All the like, like rules are complete. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the, menace. The, the fact that Rolk like has in-game dialogue calling the hive every hive every krill puppets is just kind of like dude this has been like the big bad for forever and he's over here just like oh. kind of crazy because he's also it's like... a puppet <laughs> Think about it. but I mean, yeah, yeah. That's true. he's higher up puppet but you know he's yeah, still he's, his like an cool, upper, rank, you know I mean? upper rank like, like how, how are we rank. supposed to kill the witness <laughs> that, like that's the question that comes up like i don't know how bungie's gonna answer that how? question because like Bro, he's so powerful. Want to be some dumb stuff like we take his darkest powers away from him or something like that? Could be. Uh, maybe we'll, maybe we'll use the upended on him. We'll like refurbish the upended. Oh, Raspoon's gonna fuck him up. <laughs> it, it worked out real well for him last time. <laughs> <laughs> Get back your hand grab, kid. <laughs> So, uh, this was actually if a you, uh, if you're you think on we're gonna get a, you think we're gonna get a Rasputin season this year, Mylan? With the have you finished your quest, the evidence board? Uh, I haven't finished it because uh, I didn't want to yes. farm the wellspring, but I I've, I've seen it. <laughs> get, guess guess who's mentioned in the last injury? Warmine, warmine, baby. Oh, could it be next season? Man, Dude, the, the 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 That's grand nice. over the grand overture lore stuff was really cool with like Anna going in the mindscape. Yeah, I actually haven't really read that before. I'm gonna. I think oh, that's one, one one of the next ones I'm working on is is uh, Rasputin Callus is probably my next two like hot topics. The Vox Obscura mission yesterday that I did was that was that was juicy. Had some uh. Had some hints yep. for what they're gonna do for the year, probably, or maybe not the year, maybe you know, before Light and Dark Saga is over. Yeah, it's been cool getting the little uh, weekly stories on on Callus mm. in the Vox. That's that's what we did yesterday, actually. How's Callus doing? They've done a really good job with like exotic mission lore and stuff like that. They've really put heaps into it, into in-game. Dude, what, um, dude, if we get another, like, you know, like, it was like Season of the Chosen when we got it last year. If we get another thing on the level of, like, a, uh, you know, uh, Presage in, like, a seat, you know, one of the seasons this year, oh, it's gonna be really cool. Yeah, I think, I think Vox is sort of like a mini Presage, I guess. It is. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it, 
it's a really cool like you know d1 nostalgia trip you know it's like cars and stuff again um man that it, the, the horror vibes and presage were real though like that was some spooky shit i've only just thought of this just then this is a bonus law round so like in callus right they they rebuild the base each week mm -hmm. um and probably thinking callus is going to be a disciple and we know that the relic on mars restores memories so i wonder if that's the explanation with and the relic is pyramid related somehow I wonder if that's how Kallus is like restoring the Mars base so quickly. If he's using some relic tech, and it's on Mars too, so that would that would make sense. It's, it's like he's reverting it to a past. It's he's not rebuilding it. He might be reverting yeah. it to like a past yeah. state. Yeah. Oh wow. I mean, yeah. you you can see like the past. That's what all the burning stuff on Mars is, right? Like you're seeing like the past, right. like the collapse. Yeah. You, yeah. you see the golden age. You see the collapse on Mars, which are like um, moments of its Ooh. past. Yep. And that's how they explain deep sight. Deep sight is linked to the relic. So when you activate deep sight, you see like memories of the past, which is why you can go. Th like, our jumping platforms are there. They're no longer there, but they were there in a in a past like um, of that environment or a secret passageway or whatever. Mm. They they used to exist, and that's why you can like traverse them when you've got deep sight. So, do you have any idea why like? The Vog relic is in here. <laughs> like all these collector things. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't read anything specific apart from it just sort of suiting a theme of like this collector vibe, you know, that he's <laughs> just that powerful. You know, it's like, what, what's his name? What's the Marvel thing? Like, he's that powerful. He's just got this kind of stuff in his, in his like desk drawer. <laughs> it's just like infinity stones, you know, just hanging out in his desk drawers. Like, yeah, that's... Oh, as much of a badass I am. <laughs> but no, I don't know any official law why why this stuff is in hey, here. I think that he went to the Vault of Glass and actually just like. You know, I mean, up. I mean, hey, if he could go to, I mean, if he could go to the depths of Fundament and sure. literally just drag Zeta all the way up, like it's no big problem. I'm sure he could go bully Atheon solo. Right? It's like I'm gonna just go there. <laughs> hey, he could, yeah, he could bully. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, how are the Vex tied into all this? They're not. They're not. They're not. They're taking a bit of a back seat. They're like not. Do you, do you think Bungie? You, you mean like in general, like, like darkness, and light, and that kind of sure, stuff? Sure, sure. Like I mean, they in like witness at all have anything to do with them? Uh, I haven't read stuff about the witness being involved with the vex i'm gonna have to any find stunners? a friend any stunners? any stunners any stunners do you think bungie's saving the vex for like post light and dark at this point to like be like a big bad then because they haven't really gotten much of anything for quite a while yeah i'm trying to think when oh they did that they sort of revealed their purpose it's probably all the black guy, like all the creation yeah, story stuff, right? I think it was all, yeah, all the unveiling. Like, the unveiling uh, book, yeah. Yeah, I think, I thought there was like an unveiling entry where it talked about like the, you know, the entity speaking in it, like, you know, like the Vex, like they're not all mine, but like some found their way home, like implying the Black Garden or something like that. On the left side, by the way, guys. Yeah, that there's a, like them being born. Uh when the black garden and the winner and the gardener the winner and the yeah the gardener had a big big old fight Let me cleanse real quick Nine. got infusion rifles on Resilient, like every encounter and this is good this is you came to conquer moved pieces turned gears to us you sought harm but performed aid the upended will live out its namesake. This world will be sealed from the light, leaving your kind to suffer. You are not fit to serve the deserving. You will not rise from the deep, but drown in it. 
Right. So it says like we came to destroy whatever, but we ended up turning gears and we aided them. And then, you know, we're literally looking at a charging sure. upended. Right. So it's like, did we power this some way? And then you sort of got to craft together how that might have happened with Zeta or fueling Zeta or don't know. So, uh, curious in your, uh, your opinion, Milam, what is your favorite raid purely from like a or implication standpoint? Is it Val or? It's, it's probably Val now. Like they, they dropped so, so many much. bombshells with like Zeta, the creation of Worm Larvae, Rolk is just such a cool, like, I mean, he's psycho, a but he's, he's yeah, a but like <laughs> aesthetically, it's a great looking raid too. They wrapped, they sort of gave a lot of um, new information, and I like that. If you if you couldn't pick, if you couldn't pick Vow, which one would you pick then? Because Vow is just kind of like, whoa. Uh, what do we got? Was it King's Fall for you? I mean, King's Fall. Was pro is probably the next like law heavy. I mean, you got the entire books of sorrow essentially, which starts this whole thing. Deepstone Crypt was actually pretty good too. Chat said, Deepstone Crypt. I mean, the thing about Deepstone Crypt is the background law was really cool, but it didn't translate that well to the actual raid. You know, you have like Tanix <laughs> at the <laughs> end, right? Whereas if you look at something like Val, you have we didn't have any background law. They dropped a whole bunch of new lore and then they also incorporated like foundational lore and sort of tipped it on its head. So like it's pretty hard to not, you know, to go past that. And then taking King, obviously you had the Books of Sorrow and the massive build up to Oryx and everything that he'd done. So that one's pretty good. Deepstone Crypt had good background lore, but not well in, in, uh, incorporated. Um, Crown of Sorrow had of really just a little the tiny bit of lore and maybe raid mm, last wish last wish is pretty good from us forsaken had like dude i remember looking at how much lore books came with forsaken it was like 12 books or something I'm like dude how much i gotta read here <laughs> morrisena um, is definitely still a mind like it's just hard to get through very dense mm, way back yeah yeah, it's a big book. Um, I don't think Last Wish is my favorite, though. Arm Caro's cool in that, but one, I, I honestly think they've sort of done the best with Val with integrating old lore, new lore, and environmental storytelling. It's definitely, like, up there. Yeah. When you, when you start, like, looking at the mosaics and the... Like, you got the mosaic. You got the skybox with Zeta and the upended. You got the Leviathan bone. You got the caretaker. You've got all the like worm experiments as you travel through the pyramid ship. So. Oh, this bit here with so he's like in this cocoon here. It's those like little strands. They like talk about that in the um, in the concept art. In the concept art as being like neurons and like connecting and this kind of stuff. Um, I probably could bring up the concept art. I think I've got that in my notes. It looks like a, like a coffin. Yeah. Yeah, they actually call it a sarcophagus. Okay, so he is kind of like a vampire coming out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why he's like upside down and stuff. He like <laughs> flips out of it. Rolk. Oh, I don't know if you've seen the concept art for Rolk. I'm just going to scroll through it on Art Station now, but it is, it is really cool. Oh, let's not forget his eyeball either. So they have like Rolk with these darkness veins again, and it says uh, fractal root like vein structure extends outward like a proboscis worm. Hmm. Time more into his worm daddy role. <laughs> mm -hmm. Worm daddy, which is why I think you get that when you have his weak points. Well, it's sort of like that. Yeah, like probos proboscis worm, like trying to grab onto a host sort of thing. Right. Fascinating and disgusting. Uh, yeah, this is like the waveform spindle double helix. Um, 
I don't know what to take from that. I think it's just like you know an art design, but I, I do think of like the gravity waves and the collapse, and if that has something to do with it, hmm. it'll find him upside down. Here he is. Yeah, nerves spread outward from center opening. Sarcophagus bursts open, pyramid textile, and then he like <laughs> does a flip and comes out. So it's like, is he the command center for the upended? Like, because it's obviously like it's directly underneath us right now, and it's like powering oh. it. And when we when we come in here, like, I think when he opens, he says, "You've done your part. Now it's death." And this like plays back into this idea that we charged it somehow, right? Or we were responsible for charging it. Um, and now he's, he's sort of come out. But then when we kill him. It, it's like a smoldering wreck. Like when you go back into the mission, the exotic mission, it's it's you know burnt out. So it's like he was we just like sort the of brain of it basically. Yeah, without the brain, yeah. you know, the body's just dead. Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. And I think the only thing else we haven't covered, we covered uh, Savathun trapping him in here. This was meant to be his way out. Um, the only thing we need to look at is his father's glaive, which is in the top DPS section once he once he's dead. Perfect. And I think um, we've done it. You can see it from back here, actually, if you stand on this. Broke has some. Oh yeah, I do see it. Wow. Yeah, no. You're right, Milo, and it has like those little like extra spikes yeah. that like his his glaive doesn't have. Yeah, same as the mosaic, right? So you actually, I can bring up if if you can see it from there. I'll bring up the father's glaive now because then we we've got it done as well. You have a sniper; it makes it easier to see. Oh, that was my <laughs> me trying to control V and activate my super. <laughs> that's great. So that's his dad's glaive. Yeah. Okay. So you can you can actually see this uh, on Art Station now too. You actually see the exotic weapon too. And it says, Rolk's father's original glaive shattered upon destroying the blue sun while Lubre was destroyed uh, or dissected apart and internalized into an innate ability to form glaives. The multiple disposable glaives formed during the raid are a mass-produced version of this weapon. So no. it implies that like Rolk is pulling glaive like memories from his father's glaive when during the battle, That's which would make really sense cool. with, like weapon weapon crafting and stuff. Once again, this is like concept art, but you get an idea of like, I guess what they were thinking during the design process. I guess it makes um, sense why it drops his like loot then too, right? Because it's just dropping like those extra copies if he dies and you get it. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, now the what's the exotic called again? Obligation, collective Col obligation, like obligation, collective mm. obligation. Now there's some law here, and I can't remember it. The, the art station has a massive like it's huge, it's like three times the size of the guardian, the gun. Uh, I, hmm. I can't remember the significance of that though. I did read about it, I think. I was like, oh, that's why it's big. <laughs> now I'm thinking we're getting raid fatigue. I can't remember the rest of that chat. You remember? Why is it so big? Uh, it says what the witness gave me, I give to you. May it serve you in death or in finality. It cannot be both. That's on the, I just looked at the war tab in game, with the, the pulse. That's what Rolk says. Mm. There you go. Okay, so it was Rolk's before. That's why it's so big. That even mm. looks a bit too big for Rolk. Pretty cool. I like his dad's wave. Yeah, it's cool, eh? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't, because if you look at the up ended, it's also got those sort of patterns on it too. Oh. Like these, these, these like little spiky bits coming off. Right. But I don't know the significance of that. Like underneath it, I almost get black armory vibes in a way. Like, yeah. Up in the air. Yeah. Uh, and you also, there's that. like a worm in the, in the floor too. There's a big worm. What? Oh. Oh, that's what that is. Oh. I, that looks like a worm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a worm. Maybe since maybe since like his dad's you glaive is like, oh, cross started. I, I had to go. go I had to go look at the worm. <laughs> yes, it is a worm. Maybe that was the first ever worm he made. Final. 
and he's just uh oh, use it treating it as a trophy hey mate oh maybe that's how he's like worm father maybe it's like oh but we sort of say it sort of says that worm lava is made from zeta though uh, oh maybe the first worm lava yeah Witness. forgive me darkness <laughs> And then we have the whole tendrils coming out of them. Yeah. They are exactly identical to the- I got the re-exotic again. Again? <laughs> huh? Oh funny. my god. He got it on- Les, like, actually always gets the raid exotic the first attempt, like, every time. I didn't know you can get it more than once. As I yeah. I know that. Well. What'd you want to say about the eyes? Oh, yeah. yes. oh, good one. 10 points for Gryffindor. <laughs> Tell, have you seen the eyes? I don't think two of them like are different. Aren't, isn't one of them like, uh, like Braytech or something? Yeah. Uh, let me bring it up so I can show chat too. Someone on Reddit snapped a pic of the eyeballs you see on the, on the screen now. And two eyes are uh, different symbols one looks like the symbol that you see on like the bray family like elsie bray and anna bray like the circle with the line through it and the other one is unknown but people have speculated it is it's actually the symbol for oh, i want to say i think i put my tweet is it hand of eris it looks like the hand of eris it's not destiny related, but it's like a symbol in real life called the Hand of Eris. Whoa. So, what does it mean in real life? Uh, or does I have it... to bring up the wiki page. Sorry. <laughs> Mythology Hand of Eris, as a proposed symbol, is used for informally in certain circles. Unlike the Eris, a dwarf planet will be assigned an official symbol. I'm gonna say maybe it is a symbol for. A dwarf planet called Eris, but hmm. I'd have to read a bit more. Wasn't it? Wasn't it in the collector's edition lore that like it talked about Mara like blowing up a pyramid like somewhere out there, like way out in the reaches of the solar system? I, I remember seeing that. Back in Forsaken, and there's like she has a dream of like cracking a pyramid chip in half. Uh, I, the... I don't. Did it come back in the collector's edition? I'm not too sure. Could have swore there was something recently that like like, like talked about it, but I'm not sure. I know the, the I think that was the rocket launcher that had like her. That's dream. saying the books and the the sleepless rocket launcher has stuff about it. Mm -hmm. He's right. Uh, Mara trashed a pyramid ship in the Clay Edition stuff. There you go. Good old Mara. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if it's like meant to represent Rolk having his eye on potential new disciples you know was was it anna bray was it elsie bray was it eros is like things that have piqued the interest of the witness or if it was just like a cool easter egg or that that would know. that line up with the dark future war book of where both anna and eris go bad yeah yeah oh. dark future lore book. yeah oh god oh that'd be something so is that, that going to happen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that, is that really going to be a thing? <laughs> do, you, do you want it to happen? Oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm off. Twice if Bungie Frost already wants told you the Milo. worst to I'm, happen. I want time. the chaos. This man wants Ultra to be, become bad again. He wants the moon yes. to blow up. Like, he wants everything. He wants chaos is what he wants. What yes. the? Be great. And then we lose everything. He's like, God damn, why are we sunsetting these planets? He wanted hey. them destroyed. Aramis is coming back soon. What's the deal with these symbols at the end? That's the chest. Which, which ones? Oh, those uh, are the three symbols yeah. that we shot on the way here to get the, oh, to get the okay. red box the, the weapons. Yeah, yeah. And make, and make okay. sure you pull it from the pull the reward from it too. Red box. Because um, someone just said, why does it say light kill guardian? I'm like, wait, it does say light kill guardian. What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> the 
the light kills the guardian. There he goes. What was that? I mean, the Lucent Brood are killing guardians. <laughs> True. Yeah. Well, GG's, fellas. Um, is yeah. midnight for me. But Mylan, thank yeah. you so much for going through the raid with us and filling no us in with all the juicy information. It was fantastic, dude. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, that, that's a uh well my previous video but pretty much showing you in game so i hope you enjoyed it a little bit of a lore raid for you yeah man and uh, to me this raid has become the new benchmark for for all future raids especially for the lore and stuff that's included slap that like button like your mama told you right <laughs>